for checking out our video. Today we're going to show you how to build a DIY HVLP turbine sprayer. Well, we're in my friend Doug's shop. He's behind the camera. My name is Greg. And when we're all said and done, we're going to give you the materials. We're going to show you what went into constructing this HVLP sprayer unit. If you purchase them on, uh, online or in, in uh, retail stores, these can run upwards of four, five, even $1,200. Uh, I think we've got less than 150 bucks in this unit and bottom line, you're gonna get a great tool. It's gonna be a fun project and hopefully you'll enjoy your time doing it. So why would you wanna use a turbine sprayer to begin with? Well, obviously you've got two ways of spraying materials. You can use a big compressor setup, but then you've got tanks and filters and hoses and all kinds of things that you need. It's a lot of expense. Or you can have a simple compact unit that you can take from job to job. And that's why I like this. Very compact, very simple. I don't need to have all the extraneous gear. Um, another benefit of using turbine sprayers is the fact that it's a low pressure system. Compressors, high pressure. So you're, you're bouncing all kinds of paint and creating all kinds of overspray whenever you use a high pressure painting system. With the turbine sprayer like this, you're using low pressure. So when you spray 85% or more in some cases, of the material that you're spraying is going on the product. That's a great benefit from my standpoint. It's more cost effective, I don't spend as much money in paint, especially if you're using it for things like automotive finishes or such, that material is really expensive and this can save you money. So let's get on with it. So at its core, a turbine sprayer is really just a big vacuum motor like this. Now some of you may already have a motor like this in your house and you don't even know it. Let's take a walk and I'll show you where. So a lot of today's modern homes have central vacuum systems and they're typically out here in the garage hidden in the cabinet somewhere. But right at the heart of this system is the motor that you saw on our workbench. It's buried in here, but it's being used to suck high volumes of air. We're going to be using it to blow high volumes of air. So if you've got one of these in your garage, you're halfway there. So there's three components to any HVLP spray system. Obviously, you've got to have the blower. We're going to be building the blower box around it. You got to have a hose, and, and these hoses are high, highly specialized. This is a, a much larger air hose than you're used to with an air compressor system. Frankly, it's, it's about the size of a garden hose. Very flexible, but it's designed to carry that high volume that the system needs. And of course, you got to have a paint gun to distribute the paint. Not much different externally than most paint guns, but the internal workings of this, once again, everything is enlarged to carry that high volume of pressure. Now, today's video is not going to be talking about these items. You can purchase these items. Today, we're going to talk about building the box around this blower. Now, there's lots of ways to build a box. Here's the drawing that we patterned our design after. All right, so what do you need to build one of these things? It's, it's really not rocket science, but we do need to talk a little bit about the kinds of things you're going to have to have. Obviously, you're going to have to have a motor. This motor is a three-stage Amatec blower motor. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them on eBay. There's some knockoff versions. Frankly, I recommend spend the extra five or ten bucks. Get the Amatec. These things are bulletproof, and they're going to last you for a long time. This is a three-stage motor. What that means is... There are three fan impellers in here, each one providing more power. You can buy a two-stage motor, you can buy a one-stage motor. This is kind of the sweet spot. Anything less than this and you might have some problems shooting thicker materials. For what I'm planning to do, I'm going to be using it for some automotive finishes. This is going to be ideal. Amatec three-stage blower motor. Okay? Now, of course, you have to have something to house this motor in, and, and we chose materials that we had on hand. This is three quarter inch plywood. It's pretty basic. You could probably get by with half inch plywood, but this is what we used. Very solid. It's going to support the system fine. You know, if you happen to be handy with metalworking skills, obviously that's going to be ideal. Um, all the commercial units are made with metal, but for us, we started with something that was uh, handy, readily accessible, and not very expensive. I'd go with plywood. Now, of course, you're going to need some other things to kind of put it all together. It's really simple. Got to have some hardware that brings the, the airflow out of the fan. This is just a PVC uh, threaded nipple that uh, happens to fit just perfectly. A brass nipple that goes right in here. 
not a big deal. You can also have to filter the air that comes into the system. This is a hot rod air filter. This works perfectly for our system. As a matter of fact, one of the major brands uses something very similar to this. We're going to seal this. This is a paint can lid. We're going to fit it right on here like this. It's going to provide the seal to our system. You'll get to see more in a minute. This is a, uh, an air vent that goes underneath uh, the, uh, the eaves of your home. It's going to make a great inlet for cooling our motor. Uh, you're going to need a way to turn it off and on. All these things are readily available at your hardware store. So we're going to dig right in and we'll get started in showing you how to make the next steps of the box. Okay, let's, so let's build a box. Um, be honest with you, we really didn't draw plans. We didn't think about it that much when we got started. We basically just said, how big a box do we need to hold this motor? So we set it on a piece of wood. We said, gee, about that big. This piece here turned out to be 10 by 12, okay? So we gotta have a bottom for it. And we knew we needed some support, so we ended up engineering a little support bracket to kind of help hold it in the right position. So that sets right in here like this. Now you gotta have a side. You can see we've got a cutout here. That hole aligns with the intake for the blower motor. That holds that side. There's gonna be some bolts and such in here and we're gonna explain that to you in a minute. On the other side of this situation, you have to have an air intake for the motor. That's what this hole does here, the big hole. All right, so this pops up here like this, and this is gonna allow cold air into the motor. The next thing we have to do is we have to find a way to get the air out. So that comes through our output here. There's gonna be a fitting that protrudes from the wood. And then lastly, we have the back, and this is gonna provide an exit for the cooling air from the motor. All right, you've gotta have three different ways for air to get in and out. One for the main, this is the source, this is the air that you're gonna be shooting through your gun. This is the air that's cooling this motor because these things get really hot. And secondly, you gotta have a way for this hot air to go out, and that's what we do here in the back. Lastly, there's gonna be a top that's gonna to fit on this box of ours, and uh, if you take a look, there'll be a handle that'll run in here like this across both parts. So that's the, the rudimentary box for our system. Now we'll talk a little bit about some of the holes and why they're there. All right, so just to kind of give you a feel for how this is gonna be assembled inside the box, I wanted to give you an overview here. First off, you know, we showed you we cut a, a, a bracket. This is such a, a support piece that's contoured to fit the, the roundness of the fan. Just provides some additional support underneath. We are mounting the motor actually with three four and a half inch long carriage bolts. These are being attached through here. I've got blind nuts brought in from the back side. So they're attached in the back here and um, we're able to take our, our carriage bolts, put them into the blind nut and tighten them down. You'll also notice that there's a gasket between the fan and the wood. You want to compress that gasket with these blind nuts, I'm sorry, with these carriage screws and just get a, a nice secure fit. Something else that would probably be a good idea would be to use a little Loctite on each one of these because you are going to get some vibration and such. The Loctite's going to assure that those don't come out of the, uh, out of the fittings. So we have to find a way to filter this air that's going into this sprayer. And an automotive veil filter is a great solution. Matter of fact, most of the major brands use some sort of heavy paper media to, to really filter the air. What we did in this solution was we made some um, holes, two holes, in the wood. We drilled them out and we used what's called a threaded nut insert. This mounts flush inside the wood here, which is nice because we don't want anything protruding into our gasket that's going to be uh, on the other side. Once we've inserted the nuts, then we used threaded rod. In this particular case, I think I've got, I don't know, three and a half inches of threaded rod. Two pieces sticking out. Next, this is real simple. This just goes over on top. And then we really, uh, we really went all out and used a paint can lid to make our cover for our air filter. This is just two holes punched in a paint can lid, sets on there like that, a washer and a wing nut, and you are golden. We're good to go. That's essentially what's gonna provide the filtered air for your system. 
So we filtered the air now for our sprayer, and that's really important because you don't want anything uh, getting into your, your finished product, and that's really important to do that. We also need to duct air into this motor, and I kind of found, once again, kind of a, a makeshift solution that works really well. This is called a soffit vent. You can find these at Home Depot. Basically, they set up into the soffit and allow air to come out of your eave. Well, we're going to use it in reverse. We're going to take it. We drill the hole into the side of our panel. We're going to place the soffit vent in this panel like this, and it comes attached with a piece of sheet metal that's just perfect. This will set up here like this. This will set in here like this. Ultimately, it's going to direct cold air right into the top of that, in, that top of that motor, which is really important. You want to keep that motor cool for a long life. The next thing that we did, and we'll do a little balancing act here, was we created and used another one of those vents. This time we plugged it into the back, and this is just going to be a way to let this hot air that's coming off of the motor exit the housing. We want to keep this area as cool as possible. Okay, we're a little farther along than the last shot we were in. It's been about an hour, hour and a half since that last shot you saw. We've, we've glued it on all the edges. We've screwed it completely. The motor is mounted. Uh, just to kind of give you a quick look at all sides, you can kind of see the compact shape of this. We've got the air filter mounted on the outside, the output on the front, and we're going to put in this electrical system right now. But before we do, just wanted you to see how the uh, the, the baffle works here is to bring cold air to the interior of the motor. That fits in here just like that. It's a pressure fit and it's ducting the air directly into the motor, which is super, which is what you want. The next thing that's going to happen is the, the top will just slide right into position. What we're going to do, and we haven't done this yet, is we're going to put some more of those threaded inserts here and here, and we're going to put two. Uh, studs in here with wing nuts so this can come off and on very easily for maintenance if we ever have to do it. The next step is going to be to power this thing and so we've done a couple of things. One, this is just a simple two position rocker switch with a little light on it. I've, you know, I think it was six bucks at the hardware store, mounted it in a metal uh, light plate, plate cover. Uh, there's wires on the end here and then we're just using Frankly, I just cut the end off of an extension cord to run power for this. This is a 12-gauge power, and you should be conscious of that. You don't want to use a wire size that's just too light of a gauge. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to make some connections, we're going to power this thing up and see if we can get it to work. Okay, so we've got the electrical all put back together. Uh, we've got the top on, uh, it's plugged in, we're ready to give this thing a go. Let's see what happens. So it's a little loud, but it kind of gives you an idea. We've got a ton of air pressure coming out of here right now, which is just perfect for our HVLP system. You know, it's been a fun project. We've enjoyed doing it. Uh, really didn't take that long either. You know, we had the materials. Accessing a few of the parts and kind of finding a few of the in and outs is really all it took to kind of make it all come together. So hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you learned something. Hope you get out and do a project of your own sometime. Thanks for watching.